So you're trying to set your lineup, but you're not getting the timetable on injuries. Kind of difficult to do so. This is Fantasy Hoop Stardom Cinema. I'm Lauren Shahadi alongside Sergio Gonzalez. A lot of fantasy owners frustrated, especially with Michael Red. So he's expected back, but we want to know when, Serge. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not getting the timetable from the Milwaukee Bucks. And it sounds like he's close, but the team won't commit to a timetable. So fantasy owners are going to want to pay close attention to that over the course of the weekend. Other players there that you're going to have to pay attention to, Tracy McGrady. We keep hearing that it's a standoff between T-Mac and Rick Adelman. Don't start him until you see him play. Andres Biedrins, he, he's been able to travel with the team, but still no word on a timetable there. Uh, Yi Jianlian, he was ready to return from a knee injury and a, and a busted lip set him back. He could return in week eight, but he's another player you're not going to want to start. Tyrus Thomas, he's a player who is not ready for full contact, and he's unlikely for week eight. So these are things you're going to want to monitor over the course of the weekend right here on CBSSports.com. Okay, well, the time has come. Allen Iverson should be starting for you. You remember Serge said sit him last week. 11 points, though, just won't do. We want to see an increase. Yeah, he's, he's a player that, like you said, we, we said to sit him last week, and this is exactly the reason. We thought he was going to be a little bit rusty, and that's been the case. He had no more than 11 points in his first two games back. But we think that over the course of this week, he'll be able to shake off that rust. He's going to get two games against uh, favorable opponents, including one game against Golden State. And that's everybody knows that's one of everybody's favorite fantasy opponents. That should jumpstart him. We want him back to elite status. What about Luke Ridnour, tough guy, right? He's playing with a brace on his arm, and you don't think the production will decrease? Because that mine would. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, it's going to be tough to play with. Uh, what we're hearing is, is possibly a dislocated elbow. It's uh, not his shooting elbow, thankfully. He's going to be able to play through it. But that has limited his minutes in his last two games. Uh, the, the, the possible return of red, like we mentioned earlier, that's another, another factor that could cap his playing time. So uh, he has some factors going against him this week. And, and on top of that, he only plays just three games. So fantasy owners are going to want to avoid him where possible. All right, we talked about AI. What about a guy that played against him, Jonas Yurebko, getting respectable numbers? Yeah, this rookie, he's, he's actually come out of nowhere in the last few games. He's quietly been putting up for, um, numbers for Detroit. Most of that has been to all the injuries that they've been dealing with. With Rip Hamilton possibly out through the end of the month and with Tayshaun Prince still iffy, we think you can get at least another good week out of him. He's got some really good matchups in this week and he's available in over 80% of CBSSports.com league, so you might want to go get him. You might want to get your money's worth. As a fantasy owner, that's all you want to get is your money's worth. And with Sean Marion, that hasn't been happening. Yeah, unfortunately, Sean Marion has been putting up really, really bad numbers compared to what you would expect from Sean Marion. He's, uh, he's actually been averaging under uh, 12.6 rebounds. And that was without Josh Howard in the lineup. Now with Josh Howard back, we expect Marion to be even more inconsistent than he's been. He's been averaging just around nine points and six rebounds over his last five games. And unless those numbers are useful for you, you're going to want to sit him. Who is starting at center? We're heading to the nation's capital for that. And a lot of people were wondering, you know, when Anton Jameson came back, would Brendan Haywood's production take a hit? But that hasn't been the case. Yeah, thankfully for fantasy owners, he's been able to stay around 10 points and 10 rebounds per game. Um, he's he's going to have some very favorable matchups this week, and which is why we like him. He's going to play against Sacramento, Golden State, and Phoenix. Those are three teams that rank in the top five in terms of points allowed per game. So this could actually be a rare high-scoring week for Haywood on top of the rebounds. You know, Greg Oden may be out with injuries. That is always the case with him, but he's out for the season, right? Yes. But that doesn't mean Joel Prisbilla is the answer. Yeah, unfortunately, fantasy owners have, have uh, taken to Prisbilla a little bit too much. We're a little bit concerned about that. He's been one of the most added players in fantasy leagues. And fantasy owners might be getting too attached to the fact that he had 12 points and eight rebounds in his first game starting for Greg Oden against Indiana on Wednesday. He's more of a rebounder than a scorer. And remember that just two years ago, in that year when he started for Greg Oden, uh, he had just five points per game to go with around eight rebounds. He could be of help, yes, but don't get too attached to him. All right, we're not expecting him to contribute too much exactly. to the offense. We are, however, expecting your team to do well, and we will be here every week for you. For Sergio Gonzalez, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk to you soon.